Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. We're going to talk about NFIT um, 2017. Are you ready? Um, so before we start the webinar, we'll get through a couple of um, housekeeping things. If you have any questions, please type them in the question box. And at the end of the presentation, we will answer your questions. Um, otherwise, enjoy the presentation, and there will be a short video at the end. So let's go ahead and get started with our objectives this morning. So we'll talk about why NFIT, why is NFIT happening to consumers and clinicians and the feeding tubes? What is NFIT exactly? What exactly is going to change? And when will these changes take place? So first, let's start with a quick little poll. If you could answer the question yes or no as to whether you've heard of NFIT before. So go ahead and answer yes or no. I have heard of NFIT, yes or no, and then submit your answers. And then we'll see how many attendees have heard of NFIT. So we'll give that just a couple of seconds and we'll take a look at the poll results. We'll go ahead and check those out. Looks like 100% of you have heard of NFIT. Excellent. So, so moving on, you all have some knowledge of this. So why, why is NFIT happening? Well, when enteral devices are accidentally connected to non-enteral devices, say a trach tube or a respiratory tubing, even a urinary catheter, patient harm can result. Here's an example of a feeding tube connected to a trach tube. As you can well imagine, formula would be able to go into that person's lungs. Here's an example of a feeding tube connected to an IV line. People have been seriously injured or actually um, death has occurred as a result of formula or medications going into the veins that weren't supposed to go in there. Um, here's an example, another example of a feeding tube connected to a ventilator. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of tubes going on there. Um, this could inadvertently happen. Here's an example of a feeding tube connected to a urinary catheter. Um, and this actually really, all of these things have happened. Um, and in this example, this person actually did have urine infused um, into their feeding tube, into their stomach. So those are some examples of feeding tube misconnections or enteral misconnections. How do these happen? Um, well, as you well know, there's a lot of things going on with a patient that's ill in the hospital or even at home sometimes. Um, if we have a lot of lines coming from sort of the same place and going to one patient, those can easily get confused. Um, using catheters or tubes that are not intended for that purpose, such as using um, a urinary catheter for a feeding tube, is another example. Um, compatible tubing connectors. Just the fact that these connectors can fit together physically is the main reason why they accidentally get connected. Um, when people use lure syringes instead of oral syringes for feeding, that can certainly confuse um, IV lines and, and feeding tube lines. So what has been done about this over the years? Well, back in 2006, the Joint Commission actually issued a sentinel event alert for tubing misconnections because they saw a lot of injuries and patient deaths occurring. In 2010, ISO, or the International Organization for Standardization, set standards for manufacturers to design a different type of connector. Um, a few years later, GEDSA, or the Global Enteral Device Supplier Association, launched a three-phase program for change. And in 2015, the FDA actually approved a design for enteral connectors so manufacturers could get moving on those. So now here we are in 2016, and NFIT is here. Um, NFIT is an FDA-approved solution from, as we saw, international safety organizations and enteral device manufacturers that fits together differently than the current connection and prevents misconnections from physically occurring. So with the NFIT connector, enteral feeding devices will only connect to other enteral feeding devices. So this means when you have an NFIT syringe that connects to an NFIT feeding tube, there's an example of an NFIT bolus port 
or um, the tip of a feeding set, which is NFIT, connected directly to a continuous feeding port, which is also NFIT. Those fit together. So enteral feeding sets already have an NFIT tip with a transitional connector. And the purpose of that transitional connector temporarily is to allow users to use their legacy feeding tubes or the current feeding tubes with the funnel design. So currently, pump and gravity feeding sets do have the NFIT connector. Um, and in order for patients to use the NFIT connector with their current legacy feeding tubes and extension sets, they'll need to also use this transitional step connector, which comes with your feeding set. And that allows people to use their current feeding tubes temporarily until those change as well. So the next thing that will happen, um, syringes and feeding tubes or extension sets will change to the NFIT connector. So these products are pretty much already available from some manufacturers, um, medical centers such as hospitals, acute care facilities, and distributors and suppliers are expected to start switching over to these feeding connectors sometime this year. So let's take a look at NFIT syringes to start out with. Um, here you see an example of an NFIT syringe. Those are both NFIT syringes. On the bottom, you see it without the transitional step connector, and on the top, you see it with the transitional step connector. And then we'll talk about how to use the NFIT syringe. So here you have your NFIT syringe with your NFIT port. And in order to use the current feeding sets and extension sites and feeding tubes, you will need to use the transitional steps connector. And that allows you to put that right in there. And then next slide, we'll take a look at how to use the NFIT syringe without the transitional steps connector. It simply twists onto the NFIT feeding port. And we'll take a look at the next slide. So we just took a look at the 60 milliliter syringe that most people use for, for enteral feeding. Smaller syringes for medications and other uses will also change to NFIT. Here's an example of a smaller syringe. So you'll see catheter tip, lure lock, lure slip tip syringes, oral syringes, all of those are going to go to this NFIT design. We'll take a look at the next slide. So for low-dose syringes, those are a little bit different. The design is a little bit different to reduce wastage of medications. And if we take a look at the next slide, you can see that there are some excellent videos at stayconnected.org on how to administer medications in the feeding tube using those low-dose syringes, both in hospitals and at home. So that's an excellent research at stayconnected.org. The next thing we're going to see is feeding tubes and extension sets. So right now you're used to the funnel design, the NFIT design, which you can see from the pictures and also from these tubes here, has a totally different design that only fits with other NFIT devices. We'll take a look at the next slide. So we do expect to see those um, in the market this year. NFIT syringes and feeding sets and, and feeding tubes, as we mentioned, are available from some manufacturers now, and we should start to see those flowing through um, acute spaces and home care supply companies during 2017. So how is SHIELD helping you and your patients with the NFIT transition? Well, SHIELD Healthcare does provide in-services for your staff. Um, patient notifications on product changes. Anytime a product changes, we send out a customer letter. We call the customer to make sure that they know they're getting something different and how to use it. Uh, we have knowledgeable dietitians and customer service agents who have been trained on NFIT. And then we have a wealth of online resources at shieldhealthcare.com slash nutrition. For more information on NFIT, you can Certainly ask your SHIELD Healthcare registered dietitian or representative. You can visit shieldhealthcare.com slash nutrition. 
You can also visit stayconnected.org, which is the GEDSA website or the Global Enteral Device Supply Association, which has a lot of information about NFIT. And certainly, if you have any questions about your enteral devices, you can ask your home medical supply company or your healthcare professional. So that concludes today's webinar about NFIT. Um, please visit us at shieldyhealthcare.com slash nutrition, uh, where you can also find a video on NFIT. Hi, my name is Amy Carrera, corporate dietitian at Shield Healthcare. If you have a feeding tube, or if you care for someone who does, you've probably heard of NFIT by now, which affects the way feeding tubes and other devices connect to each other. Today, I'm going to talk about NFIT, why NFIT's happening, what NFIT is, and how and when you're going to see changes to your feeding tube and enteral devices. When enteral devices are connected to non-enteral devices, like an IV line, patient harm can result. Serious injury or even death has occurred as a result of an enteral feeding tube being connected to an IV line or respiratory tubing. NFIT is an enteral connection designed jointly by several different groups including regulatory agencies, safety organizations, and enteral device manufacturers. The design was reviewed and approved by the FDA. NFIT is not a lure lock connection. It is designed so that it's not compatible with other types of medical devices, including IV lines, respiratory tubing, and urinary catheters. Feeding sets, syringes, feeding tubes, and extension sets will all be affected by NFIT. You already have NFIT feeding sets. Hospitals and home medical supply companies will slowly start to carry NFIT syringes, feeding tubes, and extension sets starting in 2017. So if you're fed via the pump or gravity feeding method, you probably are already seeing the NFIT connection on the end of your feeding set. This is what the NFIT connection looks like. You'll notice too that a transitional stepped connector comes with your feeding set, either in the packaging or pre-attached that just twists on. The purpose of this transitional stepped connector is so that you can use your feeding set with the NFIT connection until you get your feeding tube with an NFIT tip. So it still fits in there just like that. The next change you'll see with your enteral devices is to the syringes you use with your feeding tube. Right now it probably looks a lot like this with a catheter tip and it fits in your feeding tube or your extension sets just like this. An NFIT syringe looks a little bit differently. It's not going to fit the same in the current feeding tubes and extension sets that you have. That's okay because you'll have these transitional stepped connectors that should come with your NFIT syringe. That way you can continue to use your current feeding tube and extension sets. The same goes for smaller syringes that you'll use to deliver medication and water through your feeding tube. Right now you're probably used to using these catheter tip, slip tip, or lure tip syringes in your feeding tube to deliver medications. Now you're only going to have one tip and that will be the NFIT tip. So until your feeding tubes and extension sets change, you will need to continue to use these transitional stepped connectors which will come with your feeding syringes. a low profile or a button tube, you're going to start to see changes to your extension sets. Right now, they look like this, more of a funnel design. When they change to NFIT, they'll look more like this. If you have a standard feeding tube like this, 
It either stays in place with a balloon that you have to fill with water or a plastic internal bumper. If it's a balloon, those get changed out a little bit more often, so you'll probably see that change to end fit first. This is what your tube probably looks like now, the funnel type opening. When it changes to end fit, it will have an end fit opening. End fit is a connection for enteral devices that prevents them from being accidentally connected to devices that they shouldn't be and potentially causing harm. Feeding sets with the enteral connection are already available and in use. Syringes with the infant connection will be next, followed by feeding tubes and extension sets starting around the beginning of 2017. If you have questions about infant, talk to your healthcare provider. You can also call your home medical supply company, who should be able to answer questions about medical devices that they send to you. For more information on EnFit, visit stayconnected.org. You can also visit us at shieldhealthcare.com nutrition.